In this video, I am going to be guiding you through Chapter 5.5 .5, Analysis of Accounts. These are the syllabus statements. Profitability So what is the concept of profitability? This is to measure the efficiency used to compare business performance. It allows investors to decide whether to invest in the business or not. And lastly, it informs directors or managers if the business is performing well compared to previous years. Now, the concept and importance of liquidity. This allows the business to pay back its short-term debts if it is highly liquid. And if the business requires some liquidity, the business can sell off some liquid assets to pay off its short-term debts. Now we're moving on to some ratios. Our first one is profitability ratios. Firstly, we have our gross profit margin. The calculation for this is total revenue minus cost of goods sold. This shows anyone looking at this how good a company is at converting sales into gross profit. A gross profit margin is expressed as a percentage. This is calculation of the gross profit over the sales revenue. An example is that if a company is earning 80% gross profit margin, this means that for every $1 of sales, they make 80 cents of gross profit. So for instance, if these trainers sell for $100, and they are making $80 gross profit, as this is 80 cents to the dollar, that means the cost of goods sold here would be $20. In order to increase its gross profit margin, the company can raise its selling price or reduce the cost of goods sold. Now moving on to profit margins. So profit is the gross profit minus the expenses. And this is expressed in the profit over the sales revenue, and which is also calculated as a percentage. This means that all other expenses are deducted. So the more revenue exceeds total cost, the higher the profit margin. Now, total cost equals, sorry, overheads plus cost of goods sold. Okay, so that's total cost. For example, if a company is earning 20% profit margin, this shows that for every dollar's worth of goods sold, 20 cents of this is accounted for net profit. So for example, these trainers sell for $100. This means that they will receive $20 of net profit and $80 will be split between all of these other costs, such as direct costs and indirect costs. In order to increase its profit margins, what you need to do is decrease expenses. Return on capital employed is the profit of a company as a percentage of the total value of its capital employed. So what is capital employed? Well, it's the amount of money required to start a business that is fully functioning. So return on capital employed is your profit over the capital employed. And this again is expressed as a percentage. For example, if a company is earning 40% profit margin, this means that they have made 40% of what they have contributed in the business that year. So simply put, if the capital employed or capital invested was a million dollars, this means that at 40%, they will be getting $400,000 back as profit. This is a great profit margin. Liquidity ratios. The current ratio calculates how many current assets or short-term assets there are in proportion to every current liability or short-term debts. The higher the ratio, the better. And the calculation is current assets over current liabilities. 
So a ratio of two means the firm has twice the assets to cover its liabilities. This is a healthy current ratio. The asset set ratio is the same ratio as the current ratio, but you minus the inventory. This is because it takes a lot of time for the inventory to be sold, depending on the business. And also, it depends if the inventory is perishable, meaning if you are selling fresh foods or milk, these goods are perishable and have, has a very short shelf, shelf life. Sorry. And this is current assets minus inventories divided by current liabilities will give you your asset test ratio. So why and how accounts are used? First of all, we have managers. They are interested in the accounts of a business because they help keep control over the performance of each product and it allows them to make better decisions if the product is underperforming. And lastly, it enables them to compare ratios from previous years. Shareholders are interested because it is a legal requirement if it is a public limited company. They need to see if they should invest in the business or not, or investing in another business. And also, they can compare ratios with other companies. Suppliers are also interested in the accounts as it informs them if they are able to pay for the supplies or not. It also informs suppliers if the health of the company is good, such as a good cash position or whether they are highly geared. And lastly, if they are running into liquidity problems, they just simply won't supply their goods. Governments will be very interested in the accounts of the business because tax officials will want to tax the profits of the business. And also, workers' jobs will be protected if it is profitable because the government aims for low unemployment in the country. Employees, workers and trade unions will be interested in the accounts of a business because they can see whether their future is secure or not. If the company is not making profit, jobs may be at risk. And if the con business continually is operating at a loss, they will simply lose their jobs. And lastly, other businesses will be very interested in the accounts of a business because they can compare their own financial performance to other businesses. This is important because if they do want to take over another business, it's good to check whether they have a healthy account or not. Moving on to the solved examination questions. Identify and explain two ways MBB's managers could use its financial accounts to help make decisions. Way one is to help measure financial performance, just to see how they made $144 billion. Secondly, it helps MBV to compare financial performance with its competitors, which are other brick companies. Identify and explain the effect of REW of the changes in the following ratios. Change in asset test ratio, decrease from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. REW may have problems in paying down its short-term liabilities, such as wool, from their local suppliers. Change in profit margin, which is a fall in 4%. REW is making 4% less profit. This means that they need to find ways to lower their operational costs selling their award-winning carpets. Here we have some financial information in Appendix 1, and this is for a Paper 2 question. Consider the financial information in Appendix 1. Which company should ES take over? Justify your answer using appropriate ratios. For ABC company, their gross profit margin is 50%, their profit margin is 10%, and their return on capital employed is 20%. So these are all the calculations that you should have done using the appendix one. For FGH's company, their gross profit margin is 60%,
profit margin 7.5% and the return on capital employed is 25%, which is 5% more than ABC. So the recommendation is that ABC has 5% less return on capital employed, meaning that they are less efficient, thus less profitable. And I think that FGH is, is the best company to take over as their gross profit margin is 10% higher than ABC's, indicating that their cost of goods sold is well controlled. Also, they have $300 million more sales compared to ABC. This means that if they are able to control expenses properly, their profit margins can easily be increased. I hope that helped. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.